Well, hello, friends out there in YouTube land. Rob Ham here, and today we're actually going to introduce a new series with the introduction and my first impressions of the Mint InstantCon SF70. Now, I brought you guys in a little bit closer today so that you can see some of the B-roll video that I produced for Mint, and this is going to be quite a bit of fun. Uh, this series is going to look at this camera and be a complete tutorial on how to use this camera, probably over 40 videos, just like we did with the TL70 series so long ago. And I'm excited to bring that to you. Uh, today, we're going to look at the things that we've got going on, such as Flash, and discuss a little bit of the contemporaries. But before we get into that, I'd like to share two things with you. Number one, if you like this type of content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. And you can even support this type of content using the PayPal links as well as the Amazon links down below. That would be greatly appreciated. If you ask me a question, I will answer you. So hit me up in the comments below. The second thing is, how did I come by this camera? My relationship with Mint is such that I've worked with them in the past to review different cameras and products. They actually sent this camera to me for free in order to review. I did not pay for it, but they did not buy my opinion, and I'm gonna give you my exact thoughts on this as I have in the past. As you guys know, I also did this with the RF70 and the TL70. In fact, Mint even let me keep the prototype RF70 that was running around about three years ago, two years ago. It's quite a bit of fun. Now, that being said, I want you to know that I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion. So if it's great, it's great. If it's not, it's not. And I'm going to share with you every single shot that I take with this camera in my roll reviews. Now, when we look at cameras like this, we've got to realize that there are many entry points into the world of instant photography. From Polaroid, the new Nons camera startup, Mint, of course, Fujifilm, Lomography. Goodness, you can even get a Leica Sofort, which is just a Mini 90 that's been rebranded. Getting into Instax film, or instant prints specifically, is simple. But making instant photography professional can be kind of difficult. Specifically, you've got 4x5 and 8x10 technical cameras or field cameras that you can use to actually dial in your exposures, costing in the thousands of dollars for those systems and hundreds of dollars per print. What do you think an 8x10 Polaroid? <laughs> That's expensive. In the Instax Mini world, the only thing that you have that gives you anything close to manual controls well, that will be the TL70, another camera that Mint makes specifically with a wide aperture lens all the way up to f5.6. That's great on this film. When we move into Instax wide, we actually look at the RF70, full manual controls, which is the big brother to the SF70, also with full manual controls. So as you move up the scale in instant photography, you go from the consumer level to the professional level, and other than completely remanufactured or refurbished older Polaroid cameras, Mint's the only one that's making anything new with these kinds of full manual controls, including flash sync, high-speed shutter sync, leaf shutter, multi-coated lens, and that wide, beautiful f5.6 aperture, which is more like 2.4 on full frame. More about that later. But there's so much to talk about, I don't even know where to begin. But I know one thing is for sure, I think it should begin outside. So I'll catch you guys on the outside. Feels a little cold out. I'm gonna get a jacket. All right, friends, I think we're back. There's lots of things to talk about when it comes to this camera, but I think the first thing that we have to talk about is its overall look, shape, style, and design. I am gonna get into how I use flash with it here in just a moment. So let me go ahead and have you guys take a look down. Check down here. All right, here we have our beautiful camera from Mint. Let's get the front to look at. We've got our Mint. This is our latch where the, the actual camera bellows opens. Turning to the side right here, we have our strap lugs and our PC sync port so that we can sync our flash with it. On the back, there's a lot going on on the back here, so let me help you out with this. We actually have our gate to open. There's no film in here. We also have our film indicator to let us know that we've loaded a pack. Over here, we've got our viewfinder. This has got range lines for close and infinity focus, and then we have our split image range finder for the focusing itself. Down here we have an LCD screen. This screen is going to give you lots of good information, specifically how many shots are left, how many you've taken, and it's going to tell you whether or not you should use uh, what ND filter, 2, 4, or 8. You'll also see a little minus exposure compensation button right here. You'll also see a little minus that's going to tell you that you're underexposed. And up here we're going to see a little red or green light. It's going to tell you if your scene has been metered correctly based on the settings we're going to set in a minute. Uh, moving over to the other side, we're going to see that we've got a nice grip for your hand. It feels very good, nice. And that's going to complete our tour around the front. Let's look at the bottom real simply. At the bottom, we've got a tripod socket, and we also have our battery door. Although you get a set of batteries with this, you're going to want to put brand new batteries in it. I'll talk about that later. But if you're having a problem using external flash or you see the screen, 
starts to dim, that's a battery issue. So I don't know how old the batteries might be, but just forego all of that and put in a new set of batteries. All right, let's move up to the top plate. Turning it over, we can see the Mint Instacon RF70 branding. This slit right here is where your film will eject, and then we've got a flash right here. Now, if I pull that little lever, you're gonna to get to see the flash. It's a pop-up flash. This flash is an intelligent flash. Mint has designed it to actuate with different augmentations, different brightnesses based on focus and settings. And that also works with the meter reading, so it doesn't always flash at the same intensity. That's very, very cool. In fact, generally speaking, in a given lighting environment, the flash will decrease its output power when you decrease the focusing distance. That means that it'll save the faces of your friends and family when you're taking shots at nighttime and using flash, it won't blow out the faces. How cool is that? Uh, but it does pop up pretty aggressively. So in order to stop that, I just go ahead and put my finger over it when I use it. That way it doesn't pop up. I don't know that there's a lifetime durability thing here, but it just seems like a good way to open it. Moving over here, we're going to talk about the shutter dial. The shutter dial is really great. We've got one to one five hundredth of a second, one second to one five hundredth of a second. We've got auto, which is plus or minus one stop. We've got bulb, which is up to 10 minutes with a cable release or with your finger holding it down. And we have a rear curtain flash sync. You got to admit, that's pretty awesome. We're going to talk about that later when we talk about the flash. Moving over here to the eject lever. This eject lever is really great. I like it. And Amit was the first one to put the eject lever with their RF70 on the film cameras, on the Instax cameras. Currently, the Mini Evo happens to have an eject lever by Fujifilm. I wonder where Fujifilm got that idea. I wonder why Fujifilm's copying Mint. Maybe because it's an absolutely amazing, the correct way to do a film eject on a camera, specifically a film camera. Anyways, I digress. And we look right here, we've got a threaded cable release. This threaded cable release is really nice. It's actually a two-stage cable release, and it uses your standard cable thread. The first stage, when we half press down, we're actually going to get a meter reading. The meter is going to show red or green right here, and then in this box, it's going to tell you whether or not you're overexposed or underexposed. Now, you'll have to sometimes make that determination whether it's over or under, because it's going to give you one of three numbers, two, four, or eight, and that corresponds with the neutral density filter. So generally, this is going to be telling you that you're overexposed. When you see the little minus, it's going to tell you that it's underexposed. Continuing on around right here, when we go back to our multifunction shutter button, if you half press so that you get a reading and hold it without pressing any further, and then make your finger ready, so you're going to have to do a double press very quickly, one, two, like that, you will activate the self timer. At that point in time, you can go and get a self picture with your friends and family. That's going to conclude the walk around right here. Let's go sit down over there and talk about it. All right, we've come over here and we've got the flash all set up on the camera. I'm using a Yongyo Wine 560 and then just, you know, uh, a right angle bracket attachment. It's pretty simple stuff, really. In order to attach, you're going to need a flash sync socket with a 2.5 millimeter uh, right angle adapter. I think you would, would do best, but you could use a straight one as well, whichever would work the best for you. In this instance, we've connected. We've got everything turned on. Make sure that as you connect this, everything's turned off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back on real quick. So we're going to go ahead and get the camera set up on 1 1 25th of a second to demonstrate the flash for you. We're all connected. Here you go. Nice. Works just like that. In fact, Mint suggests 1 1 25th, but it does work at 1 500th of a second. It also has a really cool function for rear curtain sync. That's difficult to show out here because it's so bright, but you can definitely see it in a darker environment that, uh, if it, that the flash will fire on the closing curtain, not the opening curtain, which is really, really cool. Well, guess what, guys? If that wasn't exciting enough, Mint Camera has actually equipped the SF70 with a high-power Xenon flash. At least I think it's Xenon flash. However, when you are out using the flash, you can actually fire your off-camera strobes optically just like this. Did you see that? The flash is strong enough and powerful enough in order to fire the uh, slave optically. That's awesome. It's really nice. So if you want to go wireless with optical slave, you can. Uh, the best way to do it, in my opinion, would be to use a flash trigger or a flash specifically that has remote commander capabilities. And they're not expensive. You can get them like this YN560 Series 4 for around 80 bucks and control several different flash, 5, 10 flash at one time. Lots of fun. But guys, I'm getting really cold, so I'm going to head back inside. It's a nice pretty day, but goodness. Ooh, that's it's chilly. Come on. And my friends, we are back inside where it's nice and warm. It's been chilly in Virginia Beach. Good Lord, it's 30 something degrees out right now. That may not be cold for you guys, but for a beach town, I'm ready. I'm shivering. In any event, I've enjoyed using the camera. There's a lot more to come though, and the roll review is getting ready to drop here very shortly. So go ahead and get some popcorn ready, get your snacks ready. We're going to be 
going into a deep dive of this roll review. And if you guys haven't seen how I do the roll reviews, go ahead and check out my TL70 roll reviews and you'll get an idea for the format. It's just every shot that I take, you'll come along with me for the journey and I'll share with you what I learned along the way so that you don't have to waste film if I waste film. Learn from my mistakes and I can guarantee you there will be mistakes. That's the one thing I love about film. It humbles you, right? So it's easy to go and fix things in post-production and with, with wet. I mean, I, I can make almost any photo if it was decently exposed in the first place. I can, I can work my magic and make it look beautiful. So I never worry about digital photography. But if you can't do it on film, you just can't do it because it's one and done. And there's something beautiful about that. And I love how Mint embraces the idea of that instant creation, one and done, by giving you the tools to do it. We got one of those right here. So guys, this is the SF70 by Mint Review. This is my initial impressions. The roll review video is going to drop soon. I hope that you like this video. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Hit up those Amazon links and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.